It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, as always, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and yes, my father, Bob Payne. Morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious Sunday morning? It is a glorious Sunday morning ride. I'm back on the East Coast. And I got to tell these people on the West Coast, you don't have anything over our beautiful East Coast. We had wonderful moon rises here this week and gorgeous sunrises and sunsets. I'll take the East Coast over the West any day of the week. You're so right, Bob. I mean, being 70, 80 degrees every day in perfect weather is not as good as snowstorms all winter, 100 degree heat in the summertime. I mean, who can't love the Northeast? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Well, in all fairness, this is the magical time of year where we actually do have good weather, so let's embrace it, let's enjoy it. And as always, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to discuss plane travel and your retirement. What can we learn about air travel and how can we correlate it to retirement planning? We're going to break that down for you. We're going to talk about the always impending stock market crash. They happen and usually when you least expected, we're going to talk to you how to prepare for the next crash in the markets. Bob and I are going to break that down for you. Along with this week's financial pornography, there was a lot out there that we want you to avoid. And we're going to do our spotlight segment where we actually take a real retirement plan. We have our colleague, financial advisor, Jen Angel, on the show this morning, and she's going to talk about some of the mistakes that this investor was making with their money so you can avoid those mistakes with your own planning and investing. Let's hop to it. Let's talk about retirement and flying. And Bob, you and I had a long flight home last week from the West Coast, longer than I thought, actually. I mean, it took me eight hours with my layover. It's a long time to be traveling, and you're still in the U.S., which got me thinking. You know, air travel can be a great analogy for the kind of financial planning we do here at Payne Capital Management. And, you know, first and foremost, we talk about it all the time, but if you're going to go travel somewhere, well, you've got to make a plan to travel. You sure do, Ryan. It's um, it's really not that different than financial planning. Now, planning is is about a series of specific goals. You know, for example, if you are you have a family, you have children, you have to plan for their education. So you have to have a specific target, specific date, you know, how much you're going to save, how that portfolio is going to be, you know, managed. And, you know, what I found out after educating you and your brother and sister is that when it comes time to pay tuition, when, when it's time for you to matriculate and go to school, you know, these universities don't have any, you know, sense of humor about whether the <laughs> tuition payment's going to be paid or not. You know, you're not allowed that dorm room until that check clears. So having a specific plan <laughs> so on how to get to your goals is no different than planning for a trip, whether it be to the West Coast or Europe or the Far East. Yeah, and it's like that statistic we always hear, you spend more time planning your vacation than your retirement, which is crazy to think about because I have to say on the scale of things, retirement planning is probably a little higher than that vacation to the Bahamas, but we can argue about that. And I think that's the one side is you need to start thinking about what your goals are. But then mm -hmm. when you're working with a financial planner, you know, and just like the pilot of the plane, there's a lot of things that they need to account for, just like we do as financial planners. You know, before they even take off, they need to know about the weather. They have air control over here, giving them coordinates. You know, there's a lot of things at play. And the way I like to correlate that to financial planning is you know, we have our 360 portal where you want to have make sure all your information is consolidated in one place. You, know, you probably have financial statements everywhere, insurance policies everywhere, but to put them into one portal so that, in this case, your financial pilot can start to assess what you have and you know what decisions you have to make to make sure that you get to your goals is the same way that a pilot has to assess the weather and all the other things that go into getting you from one city or point A to point B, you know, really with the least amount of volatility, with the least amount of turbulence. You know, Ry, that's such a great analogy because when you think about it, you know, I always told you I, I always want to sit in the front of the airplane 
as opposed to sitting in the back. Now, of course, I'm referring to first class (laughs) versus economy class. I I don't want to fly the airplane. Something as, you know, as important as flying that plane and making sure you get from point A to point B safely and securely, you don't want that in my hands, right? You want that in the hands of a qualified pilot who's an expert at flying that plane to their destination. And that's the problem I have. A lot of people do it themselves, you know, with financial planning. You don't know what you don't know. And, you know, why would you want to take a chance of messing something up that's so critical as a a lifetime of income you can't outlive or educating your children or, you know, your charitable contributions? Same thing is you want to have a pilot helping you and assisting you, a Sherpa, you know, guiding you in your financial plan. Just like I want to have a qualified pilot in that front seat with a co-pilot, you know, with all the technology available, you know, flying that plane to get me to my goal. I like to think of it almost as who's the person that's future thinking. And, you know, I always find that when I get on the plane now, they'll make that announcement. Before you even get off the ground, we're going to experience turbulence along the way, probably like an hour into the flight. You know, they already are forward thinking ahead of where that turbulence is going to be. And that's the same thing when it comes to planning. I mean, I can't stress it enough, but being proactive is really the magic. You know, not anticipating, but being proactive, meaning just expecting along the way there is going to be turbulence and then making sure you're pre- prepped for it ahead of time. And I think that's the key because we do get complacent. Market's been going up for eight, eight and a half years. You know, there's that old philosophy if it ain't broke, don't fix it, which is the worst philosophy you can have when it comes to your planning because invariably, there is going to be market corrections in the future. Now, if I knew that perfect day, I'd be on my yacht, but we don't know that. So we have to make sure that you're building a plan that accounts for that ahead of time so that when the turbulence actually hits, your portfolio is already ready. You're not being reactive at that time. And that's the same thing essentially what's happening before you even get off the ground when you're in an airplane. Well, of course, you know, you're going to have a pilot who's been through turbulence before. It's better than having a pilot who hasn't. And that's why I always said that you had the best education of any advisor in the history of our industry. In your first seven years, you saw two major corrections, and you saw that each of those corrections ended up with new highs. And you learned very early on that corrections are temporary, that drops are temporary, turbulence is temporary in the market. And it's the smart investor, it's the long-term investor, it's the informed investor that makes the most money and gets the best return by having a plan of what to do when that turbulence occurs. So, you know, when you take a look at your own portfolio, you've been the big beneficiary of being educated about those, you know, those corrections and taking full advantage of it, not just for your clients, but also for yourself. And that's why it's so much better to have somebody who's experienced at the helm. Well, in all fairness, Bob, um, you've seen more corrections than me. So you have way more scars on your back than I do. So I think you take. Well, the that's why there. I have gray hair, son, yeah. and you're a blonde. You know. And so uh, when I started this industry, <laughs> for um, now, for know, now, I had blonde hair uh, and I was six foot three. You know, now I have gray hair and I'm five foot eight. So you know, sometimes the markets uh, take their toll. Well, you still have that great head of hair, so <laughs> it's not all that bad. <laughs> and now I'm starting to wonder: Should I start looking at our expenses if you're flying first class all the time? But anyway. Um, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I need a flight plan. I need to start figuring out, okay, how do I get from point A to point B and what's the best way to do it that's going to what's going to deal with volatility, deal with turbulence along the way. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full review. It's a full flight plan that's going to look at everything from taxes. If you bring in last year's tax return, our CPA partner will review it to make sure that you're not paying unnecessary taxes Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invested. If you bring in those legal docs, I know your will was done 20 years ago. It's time to update it. We'll have our estate plan to review it at no cost, see what changes need to be made so you can get that up to date. And then finally, bring in all those statements, bring in all those brokerage accounts, all the different financial firms that you have them at, and we're going to run for you our famous investment analysis spreadsheet where we look at everything on a simple three-page document. We're going to look at diversification, what risks, what pitfalls you have in your portfolio. We're going to point them out for you. We're going to look at income. Can you increase the amount of income or cash flow in your portfolio? Income is critical in retirement. We're going to show you how to optimize that. And we're going to look at fees. Fees eat away at the returns on your investments. What hidden costs do you have in your portfolio? We're going to show you how to reduce the unnecessary fees on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together 
into one total financial master plan and determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you using strategies our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. It's time to stop procrastinating. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers with over 200000 saved for retirement, our team will run for you our total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost. Just give us a call. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 752 Six six nine two. This is Bob. This is Rai. We are no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly no pain, no gain market update with a team at Pain Capital Management here in New York City. It was another fantastic week on the Street of Dreams with the U.S. stock market posting more solid gains. Again, hitting all-time record highs this week. In fact, the S&P 500 notched its longest string of record closes in 20 years. One of the main catalysts driving stocks this week was Washington's ability to pass a budget resolution, which indicates the first step towards tax reform. The promise of tax reform lifted the smallest stocks measured by the Russell 2000 index more dramatically than the rest of the U.S. market because smallest companies pay among the highest tax rates, averaging around 33% compared with the average of 27% for big multinationals. Despite all the excitement on Wall Street, according to the most recent weekly survey from the American Association of Individual Investors, only some 33% of respondents describe their short-term outlook as bullish, well below the historical average. So pessimism still reigns, even with the expectation of strong corporate earnings and the promise of tax cuts, odds are this bull market is still alive and well. And if you want to know more about how to capitalize on one of the longest and strongest bull markets and stop missing the boat, here's your shot to do it. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 844- Seven five two six six nine two, and capitalize on one of the greatest bull markets in the history of our country. Again, that number is eight four four Plan NYC. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. How's that saying go? No pain, no gain? It's the name of our show, too, but we spell pain, P-A-Y-N-E. It's no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. One of Bob and I's main goals here at Paint Capital is to educate you every possible way about your money so that you get the best advice. And recently, we did an interview with cybersecurity expert Jessica Robinson on what you need to do in light of the whole Equifax breach which happened in the last couple of weeks to make sure that your money is protected online, your information is protected online. If you'd like to get access to that video, just text to 555-888, the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Text the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H. And you can get up to speed on what you need to do to protect yourself against any sort of cyber attacks. Again, you can text to 555-888, the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H. So, Bob. Yes, Ryan. You know, one thing that amazes me is we're in the eighth year of a booming bull market. Uh, market's been going up. And the one thing that we always associate with a bull market or when you're getting close to the top of bull market is everybody gets very bullish, right? Everyone gets excited. They want to be invested. They think the market's going to go up forever. And ironically, this market has not seen that same exuberance that we've seen in the past. If anything, the one question I get week after week is, the market's at all-time highs. It has to crash soon. You know, What do you think about that? And what is your response, just out of curiosity? Well, here's the thing, right? I get, I get all my financial information from the commercials that are run here in the Philadelphia area. I don't know about you. <laughs> but we have not me. We have a uh, you know, very small market compared to, to New York, and we have these two people that are one's an annuity salesman, and he shows his audience. He shows his audience out 
that an actual audience that he's been selling to. Now, this commercial has been running for five years. And so the commercial five years ago, he asked the audience, how many people believe that a crash is imminent? And how many hands in the room do you think go up in the air? I'm going to say every hand went up because after the 2008 crash, everyone thought that it was basically the end of the world and markets would never go up again. So he's been using fear to sell annuities. And these people have been wrong now five years straight. Now, there's another <laughs> salesman in the Philly area, and he's selling life settlements. And, of course, he starts out every commercial with, well, well you know the market's going to crash. And, of course, you know, I'm sure everybody out there watching commercials shaking their head. So... Here's the thing that's amazing. Stock market crashes are very rare. If I'm going to guess, statistically, the market goes down maybe 15, 20% of the time, which means 80% of the time, markets tend to go up, which odds are pretty high that you're not going to see a market correction very often. No, you don't. And the reason why it's so, it's so front and centered is because we had two major corrections or crashes over a 15-year period. We had the big technology bubble burst in, in 2000, and then we had the real estate bust you know, in 2008 and the financial crisis. And truly, the, the only true financial crisis we had since 2008 was back in 1929. So you know, there's a 78-year spread between the financial crisis of 29 and the financial crisis of 2008. So the next one's due in about 65 to 70 years. Now, I, I'm, I'm happy about that. I, I won't be around for that. I'm not happy that I won't be around, but I'm happy that I won't be around for that next big crash. In the interim, I plan on making a lot of money in the financial markets. <laughs> I like your optimism and enthusiasm about making money in the financial markets, Bob. But yeah, I think it well, because- you know, Here's the point though, right? When has the market traded as low as it was the day you were born? Never again. I mean, markets Never. literally over my lifetime, your lifetime, our parents' lifetime has always gone up over time. But in the short term, the reality of it is they are volatile, and that's what makes you nervous. And I think the problem right now is, the mentality is, do I put all my money in the market, then it could crash. But my other option is, do I put my money in cash and get 0% return? And it's like you're between a rock and a hard place right now, and especially right now if you're sitting in cash, because you know the real magic to investing, the real key is compounding your money, and that's earning dividends and interest on your money, which is one of the key components to a retirement plan is collecting dividends and interest as part of your income. And I see that that's the biggest issue right now is one extreme or the other. And my argument is, you know, why does it have to be all or none? Well, that's because a lot of people think that way. And sometimes they don't focus on investing properly because it's not about making money or losing money. It's about overcoming inflation. It's about achieving goals. It's about preservation of capital. And the hidden insidious tax that we all pay is called inflation. And you can't ignore it. You know, it's there. And if you don't have an investment that returns at least 2% a year, you're going to go backwards. Now, here's two amazing statistics, son. Right now, there are a lot of people who have been in cash since 2008. And would you give me a guess on how much cash do you think is sitting on the sidelines in spite of this great big bull market and bonds and stocks and financial assets? Well, it's called the most hated bull market for a reason, and that's because most people have missed the boat on this. And I want to say right now, there's roughly 11 to 12 trillion in cash because I it's read closing the in on financial 13 news. trillion dollars sitting in cash. And as a result of that, what do you think the average investor has made? Well, I know this statistic. So the SP or the market has averaged somewhere around eight nine percent, whereas you, the average investor, is averaged about two to three percent on your money, which is. Basically, you might as well have sat in cash <laughs> for that kind of return. Well, pretty much that's what happened. And so you make a, a zero return in net of inflation. But here's an even better statistic. If you just had a balanced portfolio, you know, a portfolio of, of half volatile stocks diversified globally and the other half in high quality, you know, government guaranteed bonds or high quality municipal bonds, you know, with your downside risk being you get all your money back with interest you averaged about 6% a year for the last 20 years. Uh, and at 6% a year, you double your money every 11 or 12 years. So, Rye, when you look at it, it's it's not an all or none, is it? No, and I think this is, there, there's three solutions to what you're doing right now. Number one, sitting in cash at 0% doesn't make sense, even if you think there's a market crash. And the way around that is, the least expensive way around that, I'll say, because there are insurance products out there, but they're very expensive when you break them down. 
is owning a portfolio of bonds that come due institutionally managed. It's If you own your bonds, they pay interest, they come due. Even if interest rates go up, your money's coming back to you and you're compounding your money at a higher rate than cash. The other thing is, and this is a mistake that I see quite often, your money in the market is in one market, the large cap US stock market. And when you look at it over time, that's having all your eggs in one basket. So you know, not only having bonds in your portfolio, but diversifying your money over different asset classes in the markets. That means having money overseas. That means having physical assets, commodity exposure in your portfolio, real estate exposure. That's the real way to defend against the imminent market crash or if interest rates go up. So diversification, building a portfolio on your goals is the only way I really know how to do it, Bob. Yeah. So if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a well-diversified portfolio? Do I have too much money in cash? Do I have too much money in risk assets? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? What we'd like to offer for the next few callers, who've saved at least 200000 for retirement. Ryan and I will run for you our renowned Total Financial Master Plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, Here's exactly what we'll do for you. We'll review your tax return, not us, our CPA partner, who will make sure that you're utilizing every tax benefit that's available to you. We're gonna look at your estate plan. We're gonna review all of your wills and trusts and beneficiary forms to make sure those documents are set up correctly. You don't want your estate plan to be an IOU to the IRS. And lastly, we're gonna review all of your investment statements, regardless of where those assets are held. We want you to bring all your statements in. Now, you don't have to break them down for us. Just stick them in a shopping bag, make an appointment. We'll take all that information and break it down to our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. This is a simple three-page document that analyzes all the key elements to a successful investment portfolio. We're going to look at diversification. Make sure that you're diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. We're going to break down the fees, the cost of investing, both the internal costs that are hidden and the fees that are very obvious. And lastly, we're going to look at your income to see if we can maximize or optimize the income on your portfolio. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one wealth projection to answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Is your money going to outlive you? And we're going to do that utilizing strategies that my son and I have been working on and perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families get from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is the only full review available at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 844- 752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, be one of the next 10 callers at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what'd you find out there this week in the very lurid world of financial pornography. Well, right. I mean, we have um, we elected a president last November, and it turns out he's also giving financial advice now. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. He, um, he flew down to Puerto Rico after the hurricane and uh, suggested that the island's $74 billion of debt, mostly through municipal bonds, needs to be wiped out. Ouch. So that means basically, well, first off, those bonds have done terrible. And if you've owned a bond fund or something like that, there's a good chance you owned Puerto Rico bonds in your portfolio. One of the reasons we don't like bond funds. And right now, I mean, that means they're, they must be trading at almost zero based on that announcement. Well, it's not based on zero, but that I think the thing that was most amazing is that, um, you know, if you're sitting there right now and you're thinking, if you don't own any Puerto Rican debt, most likely you're wrong. Because guess who owns the bulk of these Puerto Rican bonds? Bond mutual funds. That's right. Individual investors through bond mutual funds. So, you know, how do you know? Well, you want, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure 
to see if you have any exposure because, you know, these bonds were trading about, you know, 50 cents on the dollar a week ago. Now they're trading about 30 cents on the dollar. So, you know, not that far from zero. And you better make sure that um, you know what you own and you know why you own it. And so you better call your broker or you call the mutual fund company, you know, to see what's in that portfolio that you own in that bond fund. But, you know, I got a better idea, right? Enlighten me, Bob. Well, rather than call your broker or your mutual fund company, just do what we do. Don't own bond funds. I like that simple solution. Yeah. And I think even, you know, there's a couple reasons too. Not only is credit quality such an important thing when you own bonds, but we also talk about money coming due in the future. And if you own a bond fund right now, there's no day in the future where your money comes due. The other risk that I think is on my mind, and I think it's on your mind too, Bob, is interest rates. And you know, you're know, you hearing a lot about interest rates have to go up at some point. Inflation has to kick in. And the way a bond works is when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. And if you're in a bond fund, that's a problem because now the price goes down. You may own that bond mutual fund. Another investor may own it. Bob, you might own it. And if you see your investment going down, you know what's what's your initial reaction when you own something that's going down and going down fast? You know, basically, what most people will do is cut and run, right? It's uh, you know that fear of flight. So as soon as you see something going against you, your thought is, I need to get out. Sell, 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 sell. So now you have everyone selling at the same time. You can't just mm-hmm. sit there and wait. The bond manager in that bond fund that you own has to sell bonds at the low prices, and you end up getting hurt in an investment that you thought wasn't going to be that risky, just like your stock market investments. And the whole idea of owning bonds is to create safety or protection in your portfolio. So there's only really one way to own bonds, and that's to own a portfolio of bonds that you own outright. They pay interest. They come due. We call that permanence and definition of paying capital management and institutionally managed. And that just means that you have someone who's watching those bonds so that you're not sitting with Puerto Rico bonds when you know the president comes out and tells you that that debt's going to get wiped out. Ouch. It's a bad place you know, to be. That's a big thing, right? It's, not, you know, it's also a good lesson learned. I mean, you know, right. why did people go out and buy 8% coupon Puerto Rico bonds? Because the yield looks so attractive. But what comes with that is the risk of losing your principal. And anyone who bought those bonds with that 8% yield, which sounds so attractive, have now lost another big percentage of their principal. And principal is way more important than getting some interest rate return on your money. You know, protect well, you your always say return can't... on your money is just as important or more important than return on your money. Uh, and you know, yeah. another favorite Bobism is more money has been lost over the last hundred years reaching for yield than at the point of a burglar's gun. And that's something that a lot of people do. They see a coupon or an interest rate that looks so attractive. Chris just had a client call the other day or a prospect that he's working with, actually a new client that he's working with, called him the other day and said, hey, I have this fund that's yielding 10%. What would you think of an investment yielding 10%, right? Is that possible with 10-year treasury bonds at 2.3%? Well, it comes back to another common sense rule. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. If someone's willing to give me 10% on my money, and we know interest rates are really low right now, there has to be a catch. Yeah, that looks tempting. And I love the excuse you get a lot of times. Well, well, they've been paying 10% now for a couple of years. Well, I remember back in uh, 2007, you had the number one performing bond fund that was, uh, you know, number one. I mean, it was ranked number one five years in a row. And then the sixth year, it went to zero. I mean, it didn't go down. It went to zero. That's because scary. it was invested in subprime mortgage bonds. So even past performance is not indicative of future success when it comes to yield. You want to make sure that you have an investment that will give you that return of principal. And on the same vein in, in the world of financial pornography, I found another article. We're just going to pick on mutual funds today. It's just okay, that, day. Sounds it's good just to that me. day of the week. I don't know. But I read an article that talked about how tech has outperformed, and we know that technology stocks, You know, we, we talk about the FANG trade, things like Facebook, Amazon, all these stocks have done just tremendously well. Well, that hasn't gone unnoticed by active fund managers. So the mutual fund managers that are running your mutual funds have now pushed their allocation to the sector to record levels this summer. So tech has gone up, and the managers are saying, man, I've got to get in on that action. And now they're buying what is the hottest asset class in the market. And this is one of the biggest problems with owning an actively managed mutual fund. You know, these managers are going out and basically chasing return. 
And that never ends well because, you know, just like any other marketplace in the world, when you buy something that's going up that's high in value, well, it's the opposite of buy low, sell high. You're buying high, and then eventually, when those stocks start to go down, you're overweighted there and you're not protected. And this is one of the reasons why money managers typically underperform in those mutual funds that you own. Well, that's why it's, it's also a good rule of thumb never to overweight a specific sector, right? Remember how everybody had to own oil stocks when oil was hot a couple of years ago, and then, you know, many, many years ago, pharmaceutical stocks or biotech stocks. It's usually when everyone's aware of how well something's doing, it's already over. You know, you know where the hottest area in the world is, right? For technology, the hottest place in the world for technology. I'm gonna guess, and you know, I don't even. I'm gonna guess China, but I think I'm wrong. You're, you're right. It's in the emerging markets. The reason the emerging markets are up 30 percent this year is because their fang stocks, their technology stocks, are booming, just like ours. But a lot of people aren't participating because you know they don't think about investing in non-U.S. stocks. So everybody likes to have a domestic focus which is so wrong. And we are in the greatest global synchronized growth yeah. that we've seen in years. I mean, yeah. it's not red hot, but you know, everything looks good. I mean, everybody's growing right now and that's why, you know, all markets are doing well. But if you yeah. don't have any money in emerging markets, you've missed out on the hot technology stocks in China and India and places where, you know, these are going to be the biggest markets in the world. And yeah, if you're thinking to yourself right now, you know, I need a portfolio that emphasizes the entire world that's not in high cost mutual funds where you're chasing return. It's not in bond funds where I may own Puerto Rico, but a real long term portfolio that helps you get to your goals. This is the time to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. That's a full review that looks at everything. So if you're bringing in last year's tax return, we'll have our CPA review that. Make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. If you bring in your wills, your trusts, remember those documents you had set up 15 years ago, our estate planner will review it. Make sure your estate plan is up to date, what changes you want to make. And then finally, bring in all those statements from all the different institutions where they're held. Bob and I will run for you our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? Do you have expensive stock, bond mutual funds that you need to get out of that are underperforming? Are you diversified? What does your asset allocation look like? What pitfalls do you have in your portfolio? We're going to point them out and we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. Can you increase or optimize the income on your portfolio? We're going to show you how to do it. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we've literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 752 6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will run for you our total financial master plan. There's no obligation. There's no cost. Don't miss out. Give us a call. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. This is Rye Payne. We are no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain, Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's goals is education, education. We just want to make sure that you're as well-educated as possible. When it comes to your finances, you're making all the best decisions. You can cut through the clutter to get the right information. And one of the biggest topics right now is cybersecurity. In light of the big Equifax breach, there's a lot of precautions that you want to take to make sure you're protected online. So if you'd like, you can text to 555-888, the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H. And you can get our latest interview with cybersecurity expert, Jessica Robinson. And she breaks down exactly what you need to do to protect yourself against any sort of cyber attacks. Again, just text the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, 
to 555 888. It's a three minute interview, but you'll get all the basics. We'll break it down for you. Very simple and very good information to have. Again, just text the word bullish. That's B U L L I S H to 555 888. And if you want to learn more about Bob or myself, you can always check us out on that World Wide Web at bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And myself and Bob will answer you directly. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it here right on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. Uh, The first question that came this week was from Bess, and she's in Rye, New York. She writes in, Bob, my retirement accounts seem to have done well for the last couple of years. But to be fair, I don't really know what they should be doing. How do I know if my money is doing what I need it to do? You know, Bess, that that is a fabulous question because it's something that everyone should be asking themselves all the time because it's not about did I make money or lose money. When you have a market that goes down, if your market, your portfolio goes down less than the market, that's good relative performance. If your portfolio is up right now, but it's not up as much as the investments that you're taking risk in, then it's not so good. So how do you know that? Well, that's where you need an expert or a fiduciary, you know, to take a look at your portfolio and see if you're getting the returns for the risk that you're taking. You know, give you an example this year. You have emerging markets up close to 30%. You have the Dow Jones Industrial Average, where the S&P 500 is up about 14%. So you would say that the U.S. is underperforming international. But then you might have a large portfolio, a portfolio of large company dividend paying stocks, and that's only up about 6%. So, but you might look at it and say, hey, I'm making 6%, I'm really doing well. But are you doing well? You know, on a relative basis, are you doing as well as you should? So, Ry, what's the best way for someone like Best to find out how that portfolio should be allocated? I find that, you know, I mean, we look at what, 20, 25 portfolios a week. You know, we look at people that are working with our competition and we find that they set their asset (laughs) allocation based on six risk tolerance questions they answered 15, 20 years ago, or they did a financial plan 10 years ago. You know how often it's been updated? Never. (laughs) Never, right? So the beauty of the 360 portal is that our client's financial plan is updated every minute of the day. And when, you know, when they have the time, you know, a lot of our clients are busy. They're putting in 10, 12 hours uh, work. They don't you know, necessarily have time to talk to us when, when we feel like talking to them. What's nice about our 360 portal is before they go to bed at night, they can drop down, take a look and see where they are, see where they're headed, look at everything in one clear picture, and they can see how much money and how much wealth they're going to have every year for the rest of their lives. You know, yeah. what their estate plan is going to look like, you know, how their children are going to benefit. I mean, it's the most amazing tool I've ever seen in my 42 years of doing this. Well, and I think it also comes down to here's what the planning process should look like. Uh, number one, and this is what it looks like if, if you work with us or any financial planner you're going to work with is number one, get an assessment of everything you have. And that's where having a portal where you can put everything into is critical. You know, know what your 401k value is, what's invested in it right now. Know what your brokerage account is invested in right now. Know what your insurance policies look like. Know what your legal docs look like. And if you can put them in one place, that's step number one. You know, you, that means too, God forbid something happens to you, your spouse isn't in the dark, which that's a huge concern right now. So once Absolutely. you've done that, now you can work with the data. Now you can start the planning process because now you have everything at your fingertips. And once you do that, Bob, it's, it's like the financial planning process becomes so much easier. To your point, you can just do everything at a click of a button. And with technology right now, that's like the standard as far as I'm concerned. If you don't have one place where you can analyze everything, I mean, you're, you're behind the eight ball. You're missing out on you know, where the world is today, basically. You know, Ryan, this week I, I had the tale of two clients. We had two widows. Both of their husbands passed away over the last two weeks. The one client had the 360 portal, right? So we sat down, pulled up the client's portal, and there in their vault was the will, the trust, all the insurance policies, all the income flows, their budget, everything that 
he did for the last 40 years was right there. That widow sat there with a big smile on her face saying, I'm set. I don't have anything to worry about. Nothing I have to do. The other widow, we sat down. We were going through drawers, boxes in the basement. We found statements everywhere. And we found a safety deposit box key. We don't know where it goes. We don't know what bank it's for. This poor woman just lost her husband of 50 years. And now she's completely stressed out because she doesn't know how to pay a bill. She doesn't know where the money is to pay the bill. She called me the day of the funeral, the day before the funeral, saying, Bob, I need money to pay the funeral director. Do you have any idea where my husband keeps his checkbook? And I did. But they didn't have the 360 portal. So it's going to take us weeks to find out where everything is. It, it, like you're on a fishing expedition. So it's really about not just about you. It's about that person you care so much about. It's about your spouse. It's the reason why you need to have, you know, a 360 portal to make sure that everything's organized and you don't want to have to work at this. You want it all done for you. Technology is a wonderful thing. It's all done for you on a click of a button. And I think that's the big game changer in our industry today. And if you want to have your own personal 360 financial portal, what we'd like to offer if you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement, my son Ryan and I will run for you our renowned total financial master plan. There's no obligation and there's no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to analyze your entire financial situation. We're going to look at your tax return to make sure that you're utilizing every tax benefit that's available to you. We're going to review your estate plan to make certain that your estate is not an IOU to the IRS. We want to be certain that everything is titled properly, that you have the proper trust, the proper beneficiary forms, and that everything in your estate plan goes as planned. Lastly, we're going to review your entire investment portfolio. Now, we want to make it easy for you. Take all of those quarterly statements that just came in, throw them in a shopping bag, make an appointment. We'll do all the legwork. We'll break it down into a simple three-page document that will allow you to compare apples to apples. We'll do what Beth wants to know. Am I having good relative performance for the investments that I'm having? Am I getting the return for the risk that I'm currently taking? We want to look at your fees. You know, when you have fees compounding against you, it reduces your overall return. It reduces your net worth in the future. We want to reduce those costs and make sure that you're not being overcharged by your investments. We want to look at your income and especially optimizing that income for an eye on retirement and staying retired. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one wealth projection into your own 360 financial portal, which will answer the age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or will your money outlive you? And we're going to do that utilizing strategies that Ryan and I have been working on and perfecting now for 42 years. That's correct. For four decades, we want to help take your family from your point A, where you are now financially, to your goals, to your dreams, to your point B, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as any fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Give us a call at 844-PLAN. NYC, that's 844-752-6692. We have a couple slots left. If you have a $200,000 safe for retirement, get the only full review available at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is your chance to have it all looked at at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 752 Six six nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Here's this week's spotlight on no pain, no gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. And Bob and I's main goal here at Pain Capital is education. Make sure that you get the best advice, period, when it comes to your money. And one of the biggest issues in the last couple of weeks is this Equifax breach and cybersecurity. Are you protecting yourself online? Well, to give you the best information, if you text the word bullish, that's B U L L I S H to 555 888, you can get access to our three minute, very simple conference call 
with cybersecurity expert Jessica Robinson and break out all the different things you need to do, what precautions you need to take. It's a simple three-minute video. Get the rundown on what you need to do. Just text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888 and get all the information that you need to protect yourself online. Again, text the word BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. And it's time for the best part of the week, my favorite part of the week, for Spotlight. Every week, what we like to do is dissect a real financial plan and uncover what we call the flaws or pain points, that's P-A-Y-N-E for the record, so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own retirement planning and investing. And this week, we have a very special guest on the show, my colleague, our superstar financial advisor, Jen Financial Angel. Good morning, Hello. Jen. Hey, guys. How are you? Good, good, good. Thanks for uh, joining us on this Sunday morning. Oh, thanks for having me. So, Jen, uh, I know you're working on your CFA. Does that stand for a Certified Financial Angel? It sure does, Bob. That's not the first time Bob has made that joke on this show. The first time? <laughs> uh, well, Jen, thanks for being on the show. And you worked on a case for, I think, I believe it was a doctor who had a 401k plan set up for their business. And yep. you know, why don't you give us a rundown on what you worked on? Yeah. So um, it's a, a family office and the wife came in and she was really um, doing the administrative and the managing the 401k plan. She kind of took a step back because so was raising five kids. Wow. Um, a lot yeah. Of kids. So, a lot of tuition. and she, you know, came to me and said, you know, I'm going to go back to work. She's also a doctor and is going to go back to work full time. And she really wanted someone to kind of look at the 401k plan say, okay, you know, what are our options here? They, she felt like she was paying a lot in fees, but hadn't, didn't really know, you know, how much. So we took a look at everything and, you know, from where they were, their old custodian, they were very limited. They're only given one option. So their current, the 401k plan said, okay, you know, we can do this family of funds and that's it. So they were very restricted and she, this is their whole nest egg too. So because they're putting five kids through school, some of them through medical school, dental school, you know, et cetera. Right. So this is this is the big nest egg. So she wanted to make sure that they were, you know, not paying too much in fees. Turns out they are. <laughs> what do you know? So when we broke it down, they're paying over almost 2% in just the cost of the funds, not even including any of the admin costs or right. the plan costs or anything else. And that's all they could offer, too. So they were very limited. You know what the amazing thing is here, and this is one of the, the nasty secrets of the financial services world, is you can't even see those fees because they're all hidden in the funds that she owns. Right. These are, you know, we talked a lot about mutual funds today as an old school investment. And these are what you call C shares, where that's almost 2% a year that you have no idea you're paying in fees, which in this case, I mean, that amounts to like $17,000 a year, and you don't even see it coming out of your account. Yeah. Ouch. Well, even worse, right? It's just, it's one fund company. And that fund company may not have the best performing fund in that category. In most cases, they don't. And in this case, they definitely don't. Definitely. Yeah. And I was surprised, too, because it's a big name custodian. And, you know, not to name names, I'm not going to. But, you know, they only had this one fund option. And I was, I was surprised. I said, you know what? They didn't offer you anything else? And she's like, no, that's it. These smaller plans, they have very limited access to the more robust platforms that we use for our clients. But as time goes past, you know, they should be able to qualify, you know, for lower cost strategies. But times when you have a salesman selling you a plan, they don't want to stop making the money they're making. So there's no incentive for them to do what's right for the client in spite of the Department of Labor's fiduciary rule. Yeah, and I should argue even in the bigger plans, you know, you should if you have a 401k plan at your work, you should always look at it because a lot of times it doesn't even matter if it's a small plan or big plan. You should even look at your plan at work because the employer a lot of times will push those admin costs onto you and you don't even know you're paying them. So there are options to roll out of your plan and do other things. But you know that doesn't. You should always look to see what you're really paying in your 401k plan. Yeah, you, know, Rob, was, you often talk about how mutual funds underperform. You know, Jen, I'm looking at the analysis that you did in the portfolio snapshot and it just shows the basket of stock funds uh, in mm -hmm. this portfolio and how it did against the general market. This is really bad performance. I mean, it, it underperformed by 4% a year over five years. I mean, 4% compounding in your lifetime will make you a multimillionaire. Right. So this is, uh, Ry, you're, you always talk about underperformance of mutual funds, but with the combination of high cost here, Jen, and the underperformance, 
these poor people are really being abused. Yeah, and the other thing is even, you know, they have seven different funds, you know, in the current plan, and they're all in the same, they're all in the S&P. You know, they all call it something different. One's an equity fund, one's a dividend fund, but the reality is they're all in, you know, large cap U.S., which we see all the time. Yeah, so, so you don't seven even funds know. that couldn't even come close to uh, matching the index, let alone beating it. Right, and, and that's the thing again, right? About diversity, there's there's two things that you need to assess today. Number one is, do I have too much in cash? If I do, some of that money should be going to proverbial safe investments, like bonds that you actually own outright. And the other thing is, you can only own bond funds in a four hundred one k like this. And the other thing is, how diversified are you over different markets? Right. And here, there's no diversity over different markets with a lot of different funds, ironically. Yeah. <laughs> and just from lowering the cost and you know, increasing diversification, we could increase the just the, just the cash flow by over $15,000, which is huge. And because this is such a big part of their net worth right now, you know, long term, it's going to be that much better for them, you know, compounding that interest over time. And Jen, earlier that we had a question from a woman named Bess, and she was asking about her relative performance of her portfolio. How do I know if I'm doing well? You know, you'd have people in this plan saying, oh, I made 5%. I guess I'm doing okay when they should have been making 10. So right. it's um, it, it really goes to show why people should have these things reviewed. Whether you are the plan administrator, you're the employer providing the plan, or if you're an employee of a company, you know, you have to take have somebody take a look at your plan and make sure that you're getting the returns that you're paying for. I agree. <laughs> well, great job on this, Jen. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, too, I don't know the fees I'm paying. Am I paying too much? Am I diversified? Can I have another $20,000 a year by just reducing costs and reducing the cash flow on my investments? Here's your shot to find here's your shot to find all that out. We have a couple slots left if you give us a call right now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself, Bob, and Jen Financial Angel will run for you our total financial master plan and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full review, the only full review available where we'll look at diversification. Is all your money concentrated in one area? If the market corrects, are you in big trouble? We're going to point out all the pitfalls in your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. Do you own high cost mutual funds where you have no idea what you're paying? You're paying 2% a year and you don't even see it coming out of your account. We'll show you where all the hidden fees in your portfolio are. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. We're able to increase this portfolio's income by $20,000 a year. It's a lot of money. Can we help you optimize or increase the income on your portfolio? And then we're going to tie it all together and determine... Are you going to be able to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you using strategies now we've been perfecting for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? So don't miss out. We have a few slots left. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you our total financial master plan with no obligation and no cost. You just have to call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great, great show. Jen, it was a pleasure and honor to have you on as always. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Big Bob, what's uh, on tap for the rest of the day? Right, I'm just uh, you know sitting on the edge of my seat, wondering if the Giants are going to get their first win of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> Bob, you're clearly not a Giants fan, which is offensive to all our New York listeners. <laughs> I will say no more there. Have a great rest of the weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.